Hey guys, it's Beth, and welcome to the start of our Happy Horror Days special event, the Nightmare Before Christmas event, as I have also called it. Uh, basically, we are going to be spending the entire month of December playing nothing but horror games. I have a brand new model to go along with it, and for the first thing that we're going to be doing, it's actually a bit of a throwback for us, as uh, some of you may be aware that in the past, I have actually done a Five Nights at Freddy's uh, playthrough on the channel. However, this has been delisted, and there's a variety of reasons for this, and one of them being that I just don't think that they hold up very well, and I don't particularly want them to still be on the channel. They're only unlisted, they can still be found, they they still exist, but they're no longer they're they're no longer canon videos. Um Maybe I shouldn't have muted that, but whatever. So basically what we're going to be doing is just taking a retrospective look at Five Nights at Freddy's for this. Um well for this series of videos. I'm going to actually attempt to, before the end of this month, I want to actually see if I can beat 420 mode, since I've done it before, as you can see by, you know, the, uh, the thing on the main screen. Uh, I have done it before, it's just very difficult to do. Uh, this first night is basically nothing. It just sort of acquaints you with, like, the camera controls and such. Um, I mean, I suppose I could, like, look through and see if I can get any of, like, the Easter egg things, but... That's uncommon. I could have heard, I... I could have sworn I heard stomping, too. what that was, but I did hear Foxy. 83%, yeah, we're going to run out of battery, so I can't do this forever, but... Oh, hey, look, there's one of the things. That's one of the things about this game that's really unique. This game actually has, like, hallucinations. No other FNAF game has those other than FNAF 3. And those are very, very different games. Uh, and like, different contexts. I suppose you could wager that Golden Freddy in FNAF 2 is also a hallucination. But they are actually like a mechanic that can kill you. Speaking of Golden Freddy, uh, I don't know if they appear on this night, but... Let's just try it. Might as well. It's also funny because that's basically the strategy to win. It's basically just... Oh, actually, I'll, I'll show you exactly what the winning strategy is. You see, you take this camera here, go to Cam 4B, Freddy can no longer attack you. N they cannot move from this position with that camera, because the game sees this as looking at this camera. Uh, you just have to be in the camera enough that Foxy doesn't get you, but do not, in any circumstances, ever shift the camera away, because it will just cause Freddy to move. That That is my, uh, my little tip for how this game is. What's... oh, hey, we're finally getting some movement. That is something that I do very much dislike about this particular game, is that you don't have, um... You, you don't have, like, any camera control when things move like that. They just entirely vanish. Oh! Hold on. Oh my gosh, I just... I just now realized the angle that we're looking at this late into it. So over in this area is away from the stage. I always thought that this was the stage. No, look, Bonnie is literally just leaving the stage now. That makes a lot of sense, actually. 
Uh, it also doesn't help that this game is dark, and it's a lot easier to see when you're actually, like, um, what's it called? When you're playing it. Like, I had no idea what the hell Foxy's, like, third phase looked like, like, outside of, like, before playing it myself. Oh, this is such a great shot, can I just say? This is great. That's terrifying looking. And there's Chica leaving the stage. Can I get the masks to look at me? Oh god, that's the one. Hi. How you doing? God, that. Oh, Freddy's looking at me too. Hi, Bon. Wow. I might need to just start looking at my life instead of looking around. For sure, we are not getting, um... We are not getting Foxy this night. It's just impossible at this point. I have no clue where Bonnie went. I can't see them. Which makes me believe they're in this phase right here. And I just physically cannot see them. If they're not in the hallway. Not outside my door. Also, can I can I point out something really quickly? I know that Bonnie is apparently actually blue, not purple, even though the lighting makes it look very purple. That drawing is not Bonnie. I have no clue what that is. That's also clearly Golden Freddy. Like, that, that is a golden bear. I clicked out of the game. Uh-oh. Oh, the game is not happy. My computer is not happy that, that I did that. Oh, no. Yeah, uh... <laughs> You're gonna want to be careful about that. Hey, Foxy. Alright, yeah. Foxy's very tame on the first night, so I don't really have to worry about them, but I just need to be very cautious, because if my mouse escapes the screen, that's going to be a problem. Oh, hi, Chica. Okay, you're there now, yep. Yeah. That's what I thought. Oh, also, it took me forever to realize, too, because this window sucks. That's like an imprint of, like, an arm. This shadow is terrible. Like, this window is way better. And with how much ref is reflected in this one, it's just a nightmare to make out what the heck this is actually, like, what you're actually seeing there. Honestly, I'm just going to close out these doors and call it a night. Since only got an hour left in our shift, we got more than enough power. Oh, hey, Foxy. That was a lot of power you took. So you can get Foxy to run on the first night. I didn't even know that. Also, watch. The fan will stop when I lift the camera. You're still there, huh? Alright. Well, uh, have fun with that. I think one of, like, the really, uh interesting things about this game for me is that this is like a job that I would actually genuinely love doing. Oh, zero power, but we won. Of course, that last hour thing, like, I'd never do that in the actual game uh, unless I had a whole bunch of power. That's just, like, incredibly resource wasteful, but whatever. Uh... Personally, 
a job like this where I'd be able to just like sit in a room, computer, just watch over cameras for a while, that would be so perfect for me. Oh, Bonnie's already on the move. This is why I always think like, oh, this is looking onto the stage here instead of the other way. Because like, oh, why would he be looking back at the stage? That frame should only really come up if he's like getting reset back to the stage after the doors. But I don't know. Just a random thing. Oh yeah, also, a uh, fun fact about this game, um, I might see- I might launch up the Switch version after this, uh, to show this- oh my gosh, you're outside my door. Uh, Bonnie's guitar is no longer that, uh, in the Switch version and other, like, console ports, and you may notice it's no longer this in Help Wanted, Help Wanted got updated, it's no longer the V guitar either. That is because the actual owners of, uh, I believe it is Gibson, uh, who owns the rights to that V-shaped guitar. Apparently, recently, and within the past two years, they have gotten very copyright, uh, heavy, and, like, heavy-handed, so no games are allowed to use that guitar shape anymore. Even though, like, that is such an iconic design that it, frankly, should just be, like, ubiquitous. Like, that's something that I learned about before, which is that if something becomes ubiquitous, you kinda can't own it anymore. Which is why you don't, like... It's why Google doesn't want you to refer to looking things up online as Googling something. Because to them, it's like, oh, we're going to, like, lose the ability to actually, like, have that be our thing. Uh, which is kind of crazy, but I kind of get it. If it's, like, public use enough that it's, like, in common vernacular, it makes sense that it's no longer yours. Also... Something that you'll not really see in video as well as you do playing the game. That's a shelf. It's not a vent. Like, that's something that I feel like every single, like, fan map and stuff makes that a vent. It's a shelf. I'm not sure why the shelf is empty or why they have a shelf here, but they do. Bonnie is being very mean, um, and I can tell you exactly why that is. It's because Bonnie, right now, is being very aggressive because his coding makes him passive. And what I mean by that is, as the nights progress, the AI levels go higher and higher, all the way up to a level of 20. But the thing about that is that it lowers the time in between movements, and makes it more likely for movements to happen. Within uh, 2020 mode, everything will be moving whenever they have the chance to. They cannot fail a movement opportunity. They will always move. So they can't linger at your door because they are forced to move, which is actually why technically the 2020-2020 mode in this game is not the most difficult mode, theoretically. Theoretically, the most difficult mode would be 2019-1920, because Freddy and Foxy uh, will remain the same, and Bonnie and Chica have the ability to stand in the door for hours and not move. It's honestly kind of wild, but... It's such a simple programming thing that I kind of love the detail of it. Alright, Chica is in the kitchen, so that's cool. Uh, yeah. So, basically, Bonnie can just stay at my door for however long he wants in these early nights. That's actually 
how this game maintains such a wonderful balance of, you know, you can die on like night two and night, uh, like night one, night two, night three, you can die on them, it's difficult, but you 100% can. And I'm wasting too much power, so I'm going to be being way more, uh, like he way less heavy handed on this at the moment. Uh, I'm just used to it because, you know, I'm not playing well because I'm recording. Uh, it makes it a lot more difficult. Uh, but yeah, the way that this game maintains its difficulty throughout is that, basically, you have a mechanic built into your programming that makes it so that they won't always, like, something that is a detriment to you earlier vanishes as the nights progress, which is really interesting, and I kind of like it. This game is coded on, like, your average abacus, uh, and you can see a whole bunch of screen tearing all over the place. I really think that these games need, like, an HD, like, re-release, like, the first... I was going to say first four, but no, honestly, I think Sister Location has by far the worst uh, problem with this, uh, and it's very noticeable in, like, the repair mini games, uh, like, with, like, Baby and Funtime Freddy. It's very obvious that it is a JPEG that is stretched along the screen, like, it's almost to the point where it looks like, like, they didn't try to make it, like, tr they didn't try to account for the actual curve that naturally happens, uh, within this engine. And, like, straight up, they should just make a proper, like, proper widescreen version of this with, like, better, like, aliasing because like what the heck is going on here uh and just make it so that you can tab out of the game and it's not an issue that would be like really nice honestly but this game there is a reason why this game is often still considered like the best in the series that's like just look at the ambience of this place like it is insane Insane how good they are at like creating and crafting like this area because like these buttons make no sense in context and like people complain about like oh the door controls being powered like that make no sense but you don't question that while playing you're just like oh that's just how it is like everything about this is crafted in such a like believable way and it's so... I think its best aspect is its subtlety, where it's just like, you can go and look at these cameras and different things are happening to the same character in the same frame. Like, Bonnie has multiple positions here, Freddy has multiple positions here. It's awesome, and honestly, like, some of that simplicity is just not in future games. And I feel like that's honestly a detriment to them, because a lot of them need, like, that simplicity. A lot of them just feel like, you know, they, they, it just feel a bit too much like we are trying to make a horror game as opposed to we are crafting a, a proper game. Alright, I'm going to end it off for here on this episode, so... Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. There's more Holiday of Horrors coming up next, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Bye-bye! Oh, wow.